Hi, I'm Paula Doyle and I'm going to show you today how I make my face mask uh, for the coronavirus. Um, these, this is the finished product here. Um, as you can see, it's got three pleats so it opens up nicely. It also has an internal pocket uh, here on this side and that is for putting an additional filter into if you want to have extra protection. It's got side loops for your ears made out of elastic, but it also has an additional three loops either side of the mask, and that's for putting other types of tying or, or affixing the, the face mask to your face. Um, so I'm going to show you from the start. This is what we start with. The first thing you want to have is you want to have your fabric. This is the fabric for the external of the mask, and that is, is, is cut uh, 12 and a half by 9 inches. Then you have a piece of fabric for the pocket of the mask, and that one is cut 8 by 11 inches. Um, then you have a piece of fabric which is 2 and a half inches wide by about 10 inches, and that's going to be your side loops. The other thing you have is you have a piece of flannel. Um, I like 100% cotton flannel, and this one is cut uh, six, six inches by eight and a half inches, and that's to provide an absorbent layer for your mask. And the last thing that you have is two pieces of elastic for the ear loops uh, of the mask. So, the first bit that I'm going to show you on this, let me just find a place to put this here. The first bit that I'm going to show you how to do is the bit, the, the uh, side loops, because that is made with that, uh, that uh, two and a half inch wide by ten inch uh, piece of fabric. So here you have your ten by two and a half inch piece of, of fabric, and what you're going to do is you're going to fold it and press lengthwise in half, uh, so that so, so that the, the um, right side is inside the, the, the fold. Uh, with the batiks, which is what I'm working here with here, uh, you don't really know sometimes which is the right side and which is the wrong side, and it doesn't really matter. I like using batiks because batiks have a very, very fine weave, which means that they're lightweight and easy to use, uh, but they also will not let uh, too many particulates out. So after you folded it in half, you're going to stitch that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to press that seam allowance over open uh, and keep it at the at the center back of that. So you basically created a tube. And then the next thing the next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to turn that tube right side out. Now, um, a lot of us have something called a loop turner, and that makes it really easy for you to turn that, that, that loop right side out. Uh, you simply insert the uh, a straw or something like that. This is a drinking straw. In uh, over, uh, it, it, you put the, the drinking straw inside your tube, and then you simply take your loop turner, turner and you're going to just pull that and it will come out the, the tube at this end, end and it will be right side out. But if you don't have a loop turner at home, uh, you can use something a lot simpler and that's a little spool of the Aurifil thread. Uh, that works absolutely wonderfully. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my orifice hole there and I'm going to go ahead and just thread my fabric tube on there. Here I have a piece of cord with a little um, safety pin there and I'm just going to open that little safety pin and I'm going to catch that within the seam allowance right there. And so then I take the cord, pop it into the, into the thread spool, 
and hopefully it'll come out of the other end. Here we go. And then you can just pull on that and get that, oh, it broke. Here we go. Let me try that again. It wasn't quite strong enough for what I was trying to do here. You can stitch the cord into the, um, uh, with your sewing machine. So you can just snip it off at the end too. But I'm hoping that this, this little spacey pin will work. Here we go. So I'm going to just, again, put the, the, the end of the cord through the, through the spool. And I'm going to try to do, be a bit more gentle this time, perhaps. There we go. So you can see that now that tube is turned right side out. And uh, so you don't need to have anything expensive to use it, just a, just an Orofel spool. Once you've done that, that's what your tube will look like. You're going to press that, and then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and do a quarter inch seam either side. I've tried to make it with a, with a nice um, contrasting thread there. Um, and then you're going to take your, 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 your strip of fabric that you've turned out and you're going to cut six little ear loops out of your now one inch wide strip of fabric um, and that is six ear loops each of them uh, one and a half inches by the by the width of the of the strip so what you can do if you have if you happen to have a shape cut ruler this makes it very, very easy because all you need to do is take your shape cut and put it, position it over your, over your tube of fabric. And just like that, you can cut one and a half inch wide or one inch and, and a half inch long um, ear loops. And I've got six of them there to go. Right, so we're going to set those aside now. And the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the construction of, of, the, of the map, uh, particularly uh, the, uh, the pockets next. So, you're going to take your po 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 pocket fabric here, and you're going to fold and press it in half. Uh, in this case, I have it right side in. Again, if you're using batiks, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Um, and now I'm going to take this to the, uh, the sewing machine to show you how I make the pocket. So I've got my machine set up for um, with the quarter inch piecing foot here. And I'm going to start with my little thread saver underneath my needle. Um, I've got, uh, I'm using a size 80 or 90 jeans needle here. Uh, that's probably the best one for the construction of the mat. So I start sewing on the thread saver, and now I'm going to start. I'm going to sew th this one here again. This is the full fold in the mat in the pocket there, and I'm going to stitch along that fold. I'm going to do about three back stitches at the beginning. I like to use my my seam or to just keep things nice and tidy as I sew. I'm going to get here to the edge and about a quarter inch before the the open edge of the of the pocket I'm going to turn and stitch. About, a, about two or three inches in 
I'm going to back stitch just a couple of stitches, lift the presser foot and needle, and then just move along another two or three inches, do another little back stitch. And again, come here to the corner, about a quarter inch away. I'm going to pivot and finish off that side. And again, about three back stitches there. And stitch off onto your thread saver again. So what I'm left with now is the pocket. I'm just going to flip the, the thread that is between that. And you see you've left now an opening for turning that pocket right side out. Um, you're going to turn that po pocket right side out. And if you need to, you're really going to want to have um, a nice point turner to, uh, to help you do that. Just to get your points nice and, nice and pointy on the pocket. Now, I have left that opening here at the bottom. And I'm not going to worry about that because you'll see that we'll take care of that in the stitching of the pocket. But what I am going to do, I'm going to stop, top stitch the, on the fold there about a quarter inch away. And now that pocket is ready to go uh, into, the, uh, into the mat. So I'm going to go on to the next bit. Stay, stay with the machine. There's nothing to see here <laughs> except me picking out my next, my step out. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the outside, the outside of the of the mask here. That's that um, nine by twelve and a half inch piece of fabric. And you can see that I folded that in half and ironed it. And now I'm going to take my piece of flannel and center it so that the that that long side of the piece of flannel is right there on the fold. It, it may take a few minutes because the flannel does sort of stretch a little bit. And then after I get it nice and centered, I'm going to pin it in place like that. And then after I do that. I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away so that I've now stitched the flannel into the into the pocket. And what I'm left with is this and it's ready now to mount your pocket. You take it and place it right side up. Now I'm going to find a rotary ruler that has uh, quarter inch markings and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just position my 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 ruler three quarters of an of a, of an inch away from that side right there and three quarters of an inch away from the bottom there because that gives me the perfect positioning for my pocket you see if I just line that up that is now nice and centered and I need to go ahead and pin that in place so that I can then stitch the pocket in place. So I'm going to put a pin at either corner. Remember that opening in the that we've left in the pocket? That's right there. I'm going to pin right over that. And another couple pins here. And now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine again. I don't need the thread saver for this step. All I'm going to do is stitch it. And I'm going to stitch right on the edge of the pocket um, with, a, with a, little straight, a little straight stitch. And I'm going to go from here all the way up. So here we go. Again, I'll start there. I'll do a few back stitches until I get to the end of the pocket, and then I'll start with the forward stitches. Now, 
If you want to keep that seam nice and, and, and straight, get your point trimmer again to help you because that will keep your fabric nice and positioned for stitching over. So I've come to the corner of the pocket. Now I'm just going to stitch. This is the bottom of the pocket. Take the pins out before you sew over them if you if they if you're able to. And then this is the third side of the pocket. And again, when I get to the end, I'm simply going to back stitch and cut my thread. So this is what we're left with. This is the the pocket now mounted into the mask, and this is what it looks like from the back side. So you basically sewn the flannel flannel in at the same time that you've uh, that you've positioned the pocket. So now it's only a matter of putting it all together, and I'm going to do that right right here on, on this mm. surface. Um, so let me grab that. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to come over here as uh, because so, I'm going to show you start where where we where we left off. Here we go. So let me just grab just get rid of some of this stuff that I've done. Here we are. So here, here we are. We're starting with your mounted pocket onto the right side of the of the uh, um, right, right side of the fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my pleats in. I like to use chalk for that. Um, so what I'm going to do, the first line that I'm going to do is right here by the pocket, and I'm just going to line a one and a, and a quarter inch line up with the bottom of the pocket and draw a line there. The next line that I'm going to draw is going to be a, a one and a half inches beyond that first line that you've drawn. There we go. Now, the other thing that, that you will find helpful to do is just to make a little mark right there at that fold, so where that you ironed into your, um, into your pocket. Because the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go one inch away from that center fold and mark, and then one and a half inches away from that. So now I've got one and a quarter, one and a half, and then here from the center it's one inch, one and a half. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do, do the same thing starting from this side. So one and a quarter inch from that end, then one and a half. And if you've done it right, what you'll end up with is, is one inches here at the center. And it doesn't really matter whether that's completely accurate. It, made, it makes more sense to have the rest of it accurate rather than that one. And so I'm going to carry on here. So remember, for an inch away from that center mark. And then one and a half inches away from that. Right, so that's my mask marked up. Now, what I want to do is I want to start pleating, pleating uh, the mask. So I'm going to turn it, and the, the, first, the first pleat that I'm going to do is here at the non-pocket side of the mask. And I'm going to take that first line, and I'm working away from me, and I'm going to just pleat it here to that second line. Give it a bit of a press there. 
Now without stretching the fabric, what you want to do is you want to carry on and pleat that whole line. So there we are. And then the second, the same thing from this, this one that has the one and a half inch gap. You want to take it and fold it and get it nice and pleated. Now we're ready to go to the machine and, and put in the ears, uh, the um, side loops and the elastic on the machine. So here we go. Here are my side loops and my elastic right here. And you can see that I've prepared a lot of them because I make a lot of masks. And you're going to want to have six of those loops counted out. Right. Now I'm going to end the two pieces of elastic that you're going to be using. So your first piece of elastic, you're going to position it. Remember that center mark on the mask? Just below that and about a, um, a a quarter of an inch or a little a little bit more than a quarter of an inch away from the edge then take one of your little side loops and you're going to finger press it seam side in hold it in position here take it to the sewing machine and we're just going to stitch uh, stitch that uh, that that loop just within that quarter inch seam allowance. You don't want to be over it. So I'm just about eight, an eighth of an inch seam allowance here, you see. And I've in that one step, I have the top of the elastic and one of the little side loops. Now I'm going to take a second side loop and again, finger press it, seam side in. And remember that the lines, you're just going to line it up there with the raw edge within that one inch guideline. Here it is. And then the final loop on this side. And you're going to grab the end of the elastic, position it with that quarter inch out, and position the loop over it. Now here I want slightly more than, the, than my quarter inch. Uh, away from the loop, just so that that loop doesn't get get caught up when I'm trying to piece the entire mask. So now you see I've got the side loop and the elastic in position on that one side of the mask. And I have one, you're going to do that same step again on the other side so that you have the the elastic and the uh, and the side loops the same way and now I'm going to carry on with the pleating now I started pleating this one from the bottom up and I'm going to pleat ev everything in the same direction so I'm going to start here at the end of that loop and I'm going to just bring it right next to the other loop. Now I'm going to use some of the uh, my little clover clips to just hold that in place and I'm going to pleat that. Just like that. So I'm just catching in, oh I better put that there so I'm going to catch in the, the flannel. So now I've caught in that side and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the mask. So about four of the little clover clips is what you'll want to have. There we are. And now you see you have all of this, all of the pleats going in the same direction. The final thing before I actually sew, uh, stitch the entire mask is I'm going to take a big safety pin and just catch those the elastic ear loops right there so that they don't get in the way when I'm stitching. 
Now I'm going to take the mask and simply fold it over on itself and I'm going to pin the ends of the pleated side and the pocket side. So right here at the very, very end, just pin it. Again, I'm going to pin a few more pins about two inches away or two and a half inches away from the end. It's quite useful because you can actually tell whether or not you have that as that elastic or those loops caught in while you're pinning. So now it's ready for me to finish getting it ready to, to stitch. And I'm going to re-pleat those initial pleats and just catch them up in the um, in the clover slips. So on this side too, you can see that it really wants to do it without too much persuasion. And now I'm ready to stitch. So I'm going to stitch here to here, stop and leave an opening for turning, and then finish off that way. So here we go. Now for this side, this part, uh, you may find that, the, that your machine is struggling because it's quite a lot of fabric to go through it. So if you don't have um, an even feed foot, you may want to use a walking foot on your machine. And that will help. That will help feed all of that mass of fabric into your machine. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go from my thread saver. I'll back stitch, and then I can just remove the clips. And using my seam seam ripper, I can just go ahead and stitch. And again, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance here. go to that that pin right at the end take that out and pivot it make sure that you don't have any of the elastic or that ear loop uh, in your seam allowance as you sew go to that pin back stitch lift the, pr the needle and presser foot and again just take a space do a back stitch and then come up the final side of your mask. And a final back stitch to secure. Cut your thread. Saver. Now I'm going to cut those threads where I made the space for turning. And I'm going to take my mask over here and turn it right side out. This is the fun bit. So here we go. Oh, I'll take that uh, safety pin out too. Because now you don't need to have a point turner. All you're going to do is grab your elastic ear loops and pull. And your mask will magically appear in front of your eyes. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a press. Remember, I still have that opening to deal with, too. So I'm going to give it a, a press to, pr uh, to press in those pleats. And now, all you're going to do is you're going to top stitch it with a contrasting thread. And I had one here that I did before. Where did I put my mask? 
when I finish oh come oh I'll show you this I'll show you this bit before before I find that here um, if you want to you can now finish finish that stitching where you've left that hole by hand uh, or if you're lazy like me you're just going to use some Roxanne's glue bit glue based it there we go um, and you're just gonna come here do let me just make sure that I'm, I'm going here yep okay so we go just a few dots of glue here we are and give it a, a glue based it and it's ready to top stitch just like the one I did here and it's just a narrow top stitch through all that again you're, you're gonna want to have your walking foot for that so that's your finished mass um, if and I just want to show you the other fixing options too uh, because yes you know you could have the mask as is with the with the side loops but the 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 elastic sometimes wears unevenly because you're gonna want to wash this mask um, f very frequently so so you may find that you uh, that these the, the elastic wears out or you may find that you can't find elastic so here are some other options you can use those side loops for to put some laces or ribbings or you can actually uh, rotary cut pieces of a t-shirt and pull it and it will give you those ties for for fixing the mask the other option of course would be to um, put use elastic cord and put them through the uh, through the, those little side loops there and you can use something like a uh, an awl to, to, to get it through or a safety pin to thread it through the nice thing about the elastic um, the elastic elastic cord is that with the help of some nice beads you could actually make a make an ear loop that is adjustable uh, so so just to just makes it a bit more a bit more personalized for the person wearing it. So that's how I make my masks and I hope you enjoy making yours. Bye.